Coming up in today's episode, I'm going to take you on a journey to reveal what it's really like being a mobile car cleaner in the UK. And I'll be sharing some of the highs and lows of everyday life in this crazy and heart-crushing industry. We're also going to be discussing pricing, car cleaning products, plus I'm going to be sharing loads of tips and tricks to help you become a better car cleaner. So get ready for episode three, which starts off in a very wet and windy autumn day. Yeah, do you know what? The weather's pretty grim this end as well, so yeah, let's just move it to Wednesday. Okay, right, I'll see you Wednesday. Right, bye. Brilliant. So I've been rained off again for the millionth time this week, and this is something you're going to have to expect, and if this is your first ever winter, you've got to be prepared, because people like today, for example, are going to cancel on you, even if there is the slightest bit of bad weather. And living in Britain, there's no shortage of that. So come on a journey with me because I'm gonna try and salvage something out of today. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna text a load of people, go out in my van and go and try and find some work. So anyway, we're on our way to Oxshot. I've had a couple of replies from a few customers. So now I can potentially salvage something out of the day. I can make a little bit of money. It's not gonna be anywhere near as what I was gonna be doing for this other full day, but I'm happy to take it on the chin. Because that's another thing you just got to accept in this business. Things can just change just like that at the switch of a button. You can have nice weather one minute and the next minute is just diabolical. But I will say this, although it does look quite gloomy outside and it does look quite wet and miserable, it's pretty warm and it's pretty warm for an October, I'll tell you that now. So as predicted, the weather is doing wonders again. So that rain didn't last five minutes. And it's unfortunate because that client's now gonna miss out till next week, so I just can't fit them in. But luckily for me, because the weather is good, I should be able to salvage something quite nice out of today. So let's take a look at the two vehicles we got lined up for you today. First of all, we got the BMW 4 Series Coupe, the car that looks like the bastard love child of Bugs Bunny and a Dyson Vac. And we also got the Ford Transit Custom, which needed a general tidy up, but more importantly, I got loads of new products featuring for the first ever time on this channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking the first look at the new Snow Foam Cannon from Dual Car Care. And we're also gonna be taking a look at my brand new pressure washer, which is the Nilfisk P180. And as we go through the video, I'll be mixing it up and using different products on the transit van. Plus I'll be sharing my thoughts on what it's really like cleaning cars in the run up to winter and how you can mentally prepare yourself for the harsh weather. So make sure you stick around till the very end. And if you haven't seen my previous video, go check it out as soon as this one's finished. As you can see here, this is a brand new Nilfisk and I'm loving the wind up hose reel that comes with it as it keeps everything tidy in between the jobs. And normally I like to run it through a water tank, but because this is the first ever time I'm using it, I wanted to show it off in all its glory. But after a few uses now, I can confirm that this does run through a water tank, so you've got nothing to worry about if you're gonna be wiring it up to your van. This BMW in particular was covered in a thick layer of road tar and traffic film. But the client assured me that the BMW dealership did put on that 100 year paintwork protection. You know the one, that's indestructible against acid rain and lava. I mean, why would they lie? My first task was to test out the pressure washer on its own without any chemicals. And I honestly wasn't expecting it to be so powerful because it just looked like an ordinary domestic pressure washer. But my goodness, I was surprised it didn't cause any craters in the earth. This one was so powerful and it wasn't even running on full power either. 
The shampoo I'm using here is Bahama Blue, as I heard so many positives about this one, so I was eager to try it out. And this was also a return of Alien Magic Snow Foam, as I wanted to go for something colourful in this car. After trying out the new machine, I moved on to the wheels, not because I wanted to, but because I couldn't stand looking at that ugly grill any longer. And the wheels and tyres were easy because I'm using my go-to products and a good selection of soft brushes and wheel willies. And on this occasion, I was using a super skinny wheel willy just to make sure that I could get in all their little nooks and crannies. But I will say this, if you're on a tight budget and you have alloys with big enough gaps, then I have a few words of wisdom for you. So when it comes to the wheels, I mean, a lot of you can actually make do with just using a bucket of shampoo and using an older wheel willy or a wash mitt or anything. And when you've got like alloys that have got gaps that are this big that you can get your hand into, it does make your life a lot easier and you can sort of speed up the process. So pretty handy thing to have for the sake of three quid and getting an extra bucket with shampoo, does the job. And I always make sure that I roll the car back and then give the tires a second hit. But I don't always use tire cleaner twice. I normally just do it the once then a second time round. I just go with the shampoo just to get off any last bits. And it works perfectly. With the wheels and door shuts all sorted, it's time to now put this foam can into action. And I wanted to try it with the blue snow foam, but because of the sunlight and my poor exposure from my camera settings, it didn't actually look blue. And I'm sure some of you eagle-eyed spotters out there will notice that I didn't quite have the thread tight enough on this cannon, and I didn't have a spanner to tighten it either, so there were tiny drops of water coming out, but still the foam was thicker than I originally expected. And when it comes to snow foam, if you don't have the complete package, and what I mean by that is a good machine, a good snow foam and a good cannon, you won't truly be satisfied. So you need all three key ingredients to get a successful foam. And in fact, I will be using different foam later on in this video with loads of different products on the transit van, so make sure you stick around till the very end. So back to the BMW and that sunlight was piercing its way through the clouds, making my life incredibly difficult. So I was trying to pick up the pace and for those of you who are just starting this business and you think it's going to be easy working in direct sunlight just because it's cold, then think again because you'll be amazed how quickly that sun can dry a car regardless of the temperature. It was a funny old day, it started off terrible but the way it was going it was having a complete turnaround. And for you mobile car cleaners, you will often find it a mission when you're trying to reschedule people around the weather, especially here in the UK. So it's really important that you can give yourself a little bit of breathing space in the following week. So you've got one day where you can put all your emergency jobs that have been cancelled, just so you've got a little bit of leeway because what you will find is, once you're fully booked and you get a cancellation, you then have a massive backlog, a massive build up, and sometimes it can get quite difficult to manage. So it wasn't working where I had the car over there. The sun's finally sort of gone behind that tree now. So I've managed to get this BMW just back enough. So now I've got the next sort of 20 to 30 minutes where I'm gonna be completely in the shade and that's gonna make my life so much easier. So remember that if you have got a lot of space, try and readjust the car so you're in a cooler, shady spot. I just love this time of the year because it's nice and cool out here. You don't get hours and hours of daylight because we're now coming into winter, but that's not a problem because at least you can sort of take it easy in the winter. I think after a long hard summer when you're trying to cram in loads of work you do sort of get burnout and you can end up getting so knackered but at least when you've got weather like this you're like okay I'm going to be finished at five o'clock because it's pitch black and that just sort of gives you the evening to rest so it's quite good. Once all the Bahama Blue shampoo had been washed away thoroughly, my next job was to dry this ugly pig with my waffle towels. And after that was done and dusted, I could then jump straight onto the road tar removal. Now, one thing I will say is road tar removal can be a nice little upsell you can offer your clients. And it's something you can achieve three to four times a year on average for your regulars. And once I was happy that was all taken care of, I could then jump straight onto the quick detailer. Now this one is Nitro from Dual Car Care. And fair play, this one was quick and easy to use and it gave a super smooth finish. And I think you can see for yourself just how good this car is starting to look. And the rest of the exterior was simple. All I needed to do was the glass, give it a quick wipe on the wheels and I was leaving the tires till last thing so I could do them in one hit along with the transit. 
And for the inside, I keep things very simple and believe it or not, you don't need a load of tools. I was just sticking to a few brushes, a few cloths and some yum interior. Nothing else was needed. And the reason I use this one as my main interior cleaner is because it covers everything you need inside the car. It's pretty much safe on all surfaces, including leather. And if you're loving the look of any of these products that I am featuring in this video, then I will put links in the description below along with some discount codes as well. So make sure you check it out. So for interior cleaning, I follow the simple process of spraying, brushing and wiping just for maintenance cleans. And the thing with these types of valets is not to go over the top because you just want to get the car to a level where the customer is going to be satisfied. Because after all, the worst thing you can do is a full valet for a standard valet price. Next up is the Ford Transit and for this clean I'll be using loads of different products. And first up is Valet Pro Citrus Pre-Wash which I had in a pump sprayer bottle. But actually I'm not just using it on the bodywork, I'm also using it on the wheels and tyres as well. And this was because time was running out thanks to me filming all day on the BMW. So I needed to speed up and if you're short on time then Citrus Pre-Wash can greatly benefit your cleaning routine as it's an affordable way of powering through vehicles and if you're going to be doing loads of cars in one day then it really can benefit you and it can speed you up so much quicker. One thing I get asked all the time is what pump sprayer am I using? And this one's from a company called Frogchem and they make these for hand car washes believe it or not and they cost around £45 and if you go back to my early videos you'll see that I've had this one now for over two years and it's served me really well. And if we just go back to this Nilfisk pressure washer that I'm using here, this one is fast becoming one of the best machines I've ever used. And this is coming from someone who's had a commercial karcher for many years now. And I still have the Expert 7125. And in a few weeks time, I will be doing a massive pressure washer battle with loads of different machines. So if you are new to the channel, smash that subscribe button because that video is on its way very soon. And this time round, I'm using Yum Snow Foam and Yum Shampoo. And why not? Because they're still my go-to favourites, as they never ever let me down. Another thing people ask me is how much should you be charging for a van clean? And there are several ways to look at this. On one hand, vans are normally terribly dirty on average, so it's not something you want to be cheap for. But then again, on the other hand, van owners normally require just the cab to be cleaned and the exterior. So that in itself is pretty straightforward, but honestly, please do take this with a pinch of salt when I say this. But in my personal opinion, I find vans to be a right pain in the arse, and there's a lot of getting up and down the step ladder, so that can take a little bit of time. And then once you're up the ladder and you're leaning over to reach for the roof, it means you're going to get your upper half of your body soaked wet because you're going to be leaning up against the wet vehicle. And then you've got all your equipment and your cloths and your towels that all get dirty and that. So unless you've got spares, it can be a right pain as well. So for me, when a builder rings up and says, excuse me mate, how much do you charge for a van? The first number that comes to mind is £300. That way, if he says yes, I've had a good day out of it. And if he says no, I get out of cleaning a crappy van. It's win-win. So avoid basic cleans on vans at all costs. It's just not worth the aggro. The power of this thing is unbelievable. And some of you may have noticed this already, but the length of this thing is ridiculous. But it's very good because it is so powerful. You can keep yourself so far away from the vehicle, you don't get any splashback at all. So in fact, I quite like it. Now the sun's starting to go down behind me, so I'm gonna try and get this done as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna jump onto Yum Detailer, coat the whole car in it, and then give it a quick dry off, and that should speed up the process by a couple of minutes or so, and it would give it a nice protective layer of gloss as well. And I was definitely powering through this clean, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I met my number one fan. That's the channel, is it? Yeah, I'm man, sure. yeah, it's my own one, yeah. All right, I'll take a Thank you. You could just see the look in his eyes. He was so starstruck. He was kind enough not even to ask for a selfie. What a legend. Okay, so he didn't give a shit, but hopefully he watched a video and gave it a thumbs up and I hope you do too. So that sun's getting pretty low now. So I've probably got about an hour left of daylight, but I'm nearly done anyway. So it's looking pretty good. I should be easily done on schedule. And when you see these videos, probably what you don't realize is that if you did it without a camera, without filming, it doesn't take that long to do, but because I'm filming, I'm trying to change the lenses all the time to get the right shot and change the angles. It's quite difficult to get things done quickly. So hence the reason it's now coming to the end of the day and I'm finishing up on car number two. 
but it's not normally like that. Honestly, if it was just me doing it on my own, I could probably get through another one or two cars easily on top. But yeah, like you said, you've got to consider so many things in the winter because you run out of daylight. You don't really want to say to a client, oh, well, I'm going to come and do two cars. And then you can only fit one in and then they get the arse ache with you. Sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's just better to go home and have a cup of tea. As you can see, it only had a light amount of dirt on the floor, so I just needed to use my vac and a brush to get up all the crumbs. And I'm sticking to my usual interior cleaner. And this method of cleaning is the same for all vehicles in reality, because I don't really clean dirty cars anymore. And I really like this van, it was the sort of thing that I would go for if I had more money. It even had its own urinal too, which also made a good bottle holder for my Pressel bottle. For the back of the transit I gave it a quick vac out and I used this brush which looks very similar to the sort of thing that decorators use but this one is from Valet Pro and it's designed to get in all the nooks and crannies and it definitely helps loosen the bits of dirt with this stiff brush. The very last thing we had to do on both vehicles was dress the tyres. So I'm breaking out my tyre moisturiser and I'm using a thick applicator sponge just to finish it off nicely. So we're finished now, done for the day. I've done two cars and I know people might go, oh, is that all you've done? But trust me, when you're filming loads, it's just not as easy as everybody thinks when you're trying to film and get bits done in between. It's definitely not easy at all, but it's actually been fairly straightforward. I've not had loads of difficult challenges ahead of me. Like I said, I had the van to do. Although it was a big vehicle, there wasn't a lot to do on the inside, so it sort of made up for it. And the BMW as well, although it was quite dirty on the outside and there was a lot of pollution and road tire all over the bodywork, the inside itself was pretty good as well. So all in all, I think it's been a good day today and I know we're sort of hitting mid-October now, things are starting to get cooler and it's starting to get colder, but I think we've got a good four weeks ahead of us before we really start struggling. And trust me, as soon as that winter kicks in, boy, you won't like it. You won't like it at all. So the drive home is always fascinating, so I thought while I got you here, I'm going to try out a brand new feature and this one is called A Tour Guide of West Sussex. That's a place there where people go dogging. Tour over. So it was a funny old day. It started off pretty gloomy and miserable, but it ended off on a high and things were going really well. But then all of a sudden, a road sweeper pulled out in front of me and I didn't want to get stuck behind a road sweeper. British Bake Off was on tonight and it was bread week. So I had no choice. I had to take him. I've got to beat him out, I've got to beat him out. There was two giveaway points. He went for the main route, I went for the other one. This was tense. It was now or never. I've overtaken the road sweeper, f***ing yes! I went the other way round so he couldn't get out. I'm such a good driver. Okay, enough fooling around, it's now time for the final results. 